Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Thursday. I'm glad you're here. Um, I couldn't make it in today. My children are still sick, so I'm going to be back them, with them one more day. Hopefully, I'll see you on Friday. Um, today, we're going to continue our work on our paper shoe sculpture. Yesterday, your job was to open up the 4A paper shoe practice document and complete page one by watching um, the video Abstract Art of Design. And today, we're going to be working on page two. Um, Tinker Hatfield, uh, we're, who's the shoe designer you watched yesterday, is kind of the inspiration from this project as he uh, focused on designing shoes, and that is what you're going to be doing for this challenge. Um, here's some different examples of student artwork from the past. These shoes are life size. They look like actual shoes. The only difference is they're made out of paper. So obviously, they won't support your foot. They will not be durable and reliable. But even though they they don't they don't function as real shoes, they should look like real shoes and designed for a specific activity. So keep that in mind when we're working on the planning phases over the next couple of days. So um, here is the challenge. Um, you're going to create a life size shoe using only paper. The criteria: the shoe must be designed for a specific purpose and styled for a target audience. You are the target audience. The shoe must be um, your shoe size. So you're going to be tracing your own foot or your own shoe to create that actual size. Uh, you'll be using paper, masking tape, markers, colored pencil, and oil pastels to create your life size paper shoe sculptures. Um, so, what we're going to be doing is looking at the uh, practice document. Um, again, yesterday you should have already completed questions 1 through 15 here on page uh, 1 based off of the Netflix original series Abstract Art Design. Um, we just covered this criteria and now we're going to be looking into the brainstorming. Um, there are several different questions here on page 2 to complete, questions 1 through 4. We're going to be talking about those right now. So the first thing I want you to do is try to define on, in your own words, what is the purpose of a shoe? So think about how you can provide a broad definition that would fit all footwear. Second, function. List as many types of shoes designed for a specific activity. Okay. Now I'm not asking for brands of shoes. I'm asking for specific activities. For example, basketball shoes are designed for basketball. That is one potential response. I want you to list as many types of shoes as possible. Again, basketball is a sport and that is an example of a specific shoe designed for that activity. Three, aesthetics. List as many visual features of shoes as possible. By visual features, I mean look at your shoes on your feet right now. Look at your friend's shoes. Think about the shoes that you own or have seen before. What are they broke? If you can break those down into smaller components, what are you seeing on there? One example is a shoelace, okay? Now, not every shoe has a shoelace, but again, shoelaces are one component. So look through all the different components of a variety of different shoes and list all the different features. Um, you are going to be also thinking of a creative feature. Um, if you remember the video, there was a movie that Tinker Hatfield worked on, which was Back to the Future, which was set obviously in the future. And he designed fake shoes that self-tightened. And then the same year the movie was set, 2015, I believe, um, they actually created these shoes. So I want you to think of uh, maybe a really silly uh, feature, maybe a really realistic feature, but something that has not been created yet that maybe technology doesn't um, can't create yet. But I want you to be as creative and unique as possible for an, to enhance a you know feature so think about that when you're answering questions one two three and four on page two with written responses now once you're done with that you're ready to move on to um, page three and when you're focusing on page three you are going to be utilizing um, uh, a lot of different um, components and categories here so you have shoe type target audience company name and logo. So here's some different examples of each of those that I have here and we're going to be talking about those right now. First, company name. Company name should be meaningful, title, 
that embodies your shoe or your actual company. For example, did you know Nike is actually the wing goddess that personifies victory? So think about that. If you are a footwear company and you're creating shoes that are designed for performance, having a logo that literally means to win is a very significant meaning. So try not to just write your name on the shoes. Try to think of something clever. Shoe type. You can create any type of shoe that you want. It can be for a sport. It can be for casual. Just can't be sandals. It can be fashion or it can be utility. There's a lot of options. The main thing is it has to be closed toed shoes. Target audience. You are the target audience. So although you are technically kind of both the designer and the celebrity, just like Tinker Hatfield was doing shoes for Michael Jordan, other people are going to potentially buy your shoes. So you really need to think about what is the shoe designed for? Like, are you, are you pretending you're a famous basketball player? Cool. Maybe you just want casual shoes. Maybe they're fashion. It doesn't matter. So think about all the different components that go into a shoe that can help sell it for other demographics. And then finally, you got to design your own logo. This is my favorite part. A logo is a graphic mark or emblem that uh, symbolizes uh, your shoe for public recognition. Um, the better logos are um, uh, memorable, meaningful, unique, professional, uh, that is unified. For example, the Apple, the uh, McDonald's M, the Peacock, the Puma, the swoosh, those are really good logos, but anytime you're utilizing a lot of letters or even spell out your whole name, it's not a high quality logo. So really try for simple designs that minimize a little bit of um, uh, minimalistic uh, kind of compositions. Um, think about maybe an animal pattern or your favorite colors when you're working on your shoe. So for page three, what you're going to be doing is designing three different types of shoes that utilize different target audiences, company names, as well as logos. So let's go back and look at my example so you know how to complete page three with drawing responses. So for example, my first shoe in this column here, I designed as a running shoe. As a result, I drew a side view of a running shoe here. You can tell it's a running shoe because it has to have a lot of ankle support and it's very kind of thin for max uh, minimum weight. Um, I wanted a logo that kind of matched the name of the shoe. I took the word performance and just wrote performa because it um, sounds like it's from a different language and kind of more unique. And this symbol is supposed to represent like a gear or like a, a needle to represent kind of top performance. So again, I have a running shoe. I have this logo that goes with performance or performa, and it's a running shoe. Second shoe here is a basketball shoe. You can tell it's a basketball shoe because of the high ankle support. These are called the Savage Sealy Ones. So S, S here, and then I have a basketball behind it. And there's the basketball shoe. And then my third shoe, I did a hiking boot. So notice how the boot has a lot of ankle support and there's some tread here. And I thought, okay, hiking, what would be cool for hiking? And I looked up and found a Greek goddess that personifies um, hunting. And as a result, I made the logo a, uh, an arrow uh, with, a, with a, a quiver full of arrows. So again, hiking, arrow, Artemis, SS, Savage Sealy's basketball shoes, and then Performa with the gear. So try to make sure that your shoes are aligned and make sense. Now, let's say you're like, Mr. Sealy, I know I want to make a basketball shoe. That's fine, but you should have three different logos and three different company names, if that's the case. Notice how I drew all of these on one piece of paper, and it divided my paper in half with three columns vertically and then four columns this way. I want you to do the same. Um, you probably won't get done with the drawing portion, but if you uh, get something done that you want to photograph, you can put it here. Otherwise, you can photograph it tomorrow. So to review, yesterday we worked on page one. You should be done with that. Today you're working on written responses for page two, and then you're going to start the drawing responses for page three. Work hard, have fun, and be 